All right, this being the day that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, <clears throat> there are parallels, there are symbols in the Bible that teach us and tell us that there is a resurrection power available to every Christian. The same power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead is available to us, not just after we die, not just at some future point in history, but right now today in our day-to-day -day lives as we live out our lives and we go through the challenges that are set forth of course in our lives we we must have in order to to, to meet each challenge of life we must have goals and um the goal, of course, for every Christian is to become like Jesus Christ. And so our goal is to run the race that is set before us, as Paul explains it in Philippians 3, 7 through 16, and we'll read that in just a moment. To run the race that's set before us, to cross that finish line, and do that using the resurrection power that is available to us. So let's go ahead and go to our text. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 16. Here's what Paul says. He says, But everything that was gained to me I have considered to be loss because of Christ. More than that, I also consider everything to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them filth so that I may gain Christ. Now, let me make a note here before we continue. That word filth, that means dung. That means horse biscuits. The stuff that gets on your front yard when the dog, neighbor's dog comes by. So he says, I have suffered the loss of all things and consider them dung so that I may gain Christ. Verse 9. And be found in him not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but one that is through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. Not that I have already reached the goal or am already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Brothers, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and reaching forward to what is ahead, I pursue as my goal the prize promised by God's heavenly call in Christ Jesus. Therefore, all who are mature should think this way. And if you think differently about anything, God will reveal this to you also. In any case, we should live up to whatever truth we have attained. Now, did you notice some key verses in there? We're going to go over a few of those. We're going to go over uh, 
four goals for every Christian. And then we're going to go over some keys. And we'll see how far we get today. The Christian's four goals. Like I said, in order to progress in life, we always have to have a goal. We have to have some place that we're going toward. Things that we're working for. And um, in every life, there are, there are challenges to that goal. There, uh, we are all running this race, and in every foot race, there are always... Sometimes they get rained out. Sometimes there are injuries. Sometimes you run a race and your body just isn't prepared and you have to drop out before you cross the finish line. But the goal is that we keep trying again and again until we finally cross that finish line in a way that we can be proud of. And more importantly for the Christian, in a way that God can be proud of us. So here are the, the Christian's four goals. First of all, to know Christ intimately. Remember Paul said in verse 10, my goal is to know Him. My goal is to know Jesus Christ. Now, how can we know Jesus Christ? Well, of course, accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Savior gives us a certain intimacy with Him and a, and a certain revelation and a certain knowledge. But when we understand who Jesus Christ really is, and that is that He is God that was made flesh. And when you read the book of John in the first chapter, you understand that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that's talking about Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus Christ has always been and will always be the Word of God. So, if Jesus Christ then is the Word of God, what's the best way for us to get to know Him? To open your Bibles, right? In order for us to have an intimate understanding of who Jesus Christ is, in order for us to have an intimate relationship, which is our goal as a Christian, in order to cross the finish line, in, in order to finish this race, we have to have an intimate knowledge of our Lord and Savior the one who died on the cross for us, the one who gave his life as a ransom to pay our debt of sin, the one who was raised up again from the grave in order to justify us in the eyes of God. In order to know him, we have to know every word that is spoken by God. And most of all, those words that were spoken by Christ himself. Remember that Jesus, when he came, he said, I am giving you, uh, he said, you have the commandments, but I'm giving you new commandments. And the main commandment that he stressed over all, over all things, is that we love one another the way that we love ourselves. That's the main commandment. And um, in a discussion with a, a young man one time, 
he stated that if you kept this one commandment, you would fulfill every other command. If we would love our neighbor as we do ourselves. So your first goal in order to run this race, to cross that finish line, to break that ribbon, is to know Jesus Christ in a very personal and intimate way. The only way to do that is to know God's Word, to know your Bible, to read, to memorize, to meditate on God's Word. The next goal is to experience the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Paul said that one of, one of his goals in this race is to have the resurrection power. The power of Jesus Christ's resurrection. Now, what in the world is he talking about? If we, if we haven't died yet, how can we be resurrected? Well, this is a principle that's taught in God's Word, and especially in Romans chapter 6, which I have stressed many times that um, if you don't memorize anything else in the Bible, memorize and meditate on Romans chapter 6. There is so much knowledge there that will absolutely change your life. You want to know a lot about uh, growing as a Christian? Read and meditate on the book of James. Um, but if you want to know about resurrection power, there are a few places in the Bible that, are, that will better teach you than Romans chapter 6. And it's there that we learn this principle. That when we become a child of God, we should die to ourselves, to the old person that we used to be. That old person should die and be buried and put away. And we should be raised up a new creature in Christ. We should become a new person. A new person in Christ putting away all the sinfulness and the selfishness and the, the destruction that leads to death that was a part of our old life, now we push forward with our new life, having an understanding and a knowledge of Jesus Christ, His salvation power, His power to save our soul, His power to give us joy and abundance as we live our lives on this planet. His resurrection power, which raises us up from the dead, raises us up from the filth that we used to live in, and sets us in heavenly places. Even now, today, many of us have suffered great tragedies lately and, and suffered great, greatly. Um, We've lost many things. Paul says that as Christians, we should count all of these earthly things as filth. It's just junk. It's trash and it's garbage. And it holds us, it actually holds us back. It holds us back away from the resurrection power that is available to us through Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, it, it tells us that we have been planted together or buried together like Jesus Christ was. And if we have been buried together, then we will certainly be raised again, just as Christ was raised again. It tells us that Christ died once to cover the sins of mankind. 
But when he rose again, that was all there was to it. He finished the goal. He finished his race. Remember when he was on the cross? His final words before his death? He said, it is finished. Among his final words. It is finished. Paul here, speaking of this race that we run in life, says we should be able to experience that same resurrection power that raised up Jesus Christ from the dead by considering our old lives, our old selves, to be dead, to be buried, to be put away, and to allow ourselves to be resurrected as new creatures in Jesus Christ. Okay, the next thing is what I was talking about there. And that is that in order to be raised up from the dead, we have to die. Not physically. There will be a resurrection that is physical. Someday. These bodies will die, and then we will await the resurrection from the dead. But there is also a spiritual resurrection. And that spiritual resurrection can only take place when we learn to die to ourself, to die to our selfishness, to die to our sin, to die to our own selfish lusts to put those former things behind us. Put them in the ground. Plant them there six feet under. Cover them up and leave them behind. We have to learn that, you know, and it's a hard lesson because most of uh, uh, every one of us were raised backwards. Every one of us were raised where that as a baby, you are, uh, you learn that you are the center of the family's universe. Right? And the baby gets all the attention. And the more noise the baby makes, the more attention he gets. And hopefully, as we grow and we mature and as we get through our time of uh, as a baby being, you know, totally self-centered, through childhood, learning that there are authorities above us and that, no, the world doesn't revolve around us. It, it revolves around the authorities above us. As we go through our rebellious teenage years, and learn that certainly we have not the control here. And certainly the world cannot revolve around us. If it did, it would just fall apart and be utterly destroyed until we reach maturity where we finally understand, hey, the world doesn't revolve around me. It revolves around God. It revolves around our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Every good, every perfect, every natural thing is surrounded in Jesus Christ. So we must learn as Christians, if we're going to run this race successfully and reach our goals, to die to ourself and our selfishness and our sin and our lusts. To put those things in the ground, bury them and leave them there. So that we can begin to experience the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And then finally, our fourth goal in order to run this race that we're running is to be able to persevere to the end. Paul said this in verse 11, 
assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. Assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. He wasn't saying, maybe this will happen. When he said assuming, he, what he was saying is, he was working under the assumption. He had total faith without doubt that he would somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. Not only physically at some point in the future, but as we run this race that we call life. Paul says that we need four goals in order to run this race. To know Christ intimately. To experience His resurrection power. To die to ourselves and start living for Christ. And to be able to persevere to the end. You know what persevere means? Persevere means to be persistent, determined. Persevere means that you never stop, that you always keep going, no matter what happens. Remember I said that in a race, sometimes it gets rained out, sometimes somebody gets a sprained ankle, sometimes somebody gets uh, winded. But if you're really serious about running track, you get right back out there on the field again, and you run the next race. And you keep running that race. Until you become proud of your accomplishments. Your family becomes proud of your accomplishments. And it's the same in running the Christian race. We have to run with perseverance. Never stopping, never allowing anything to stop us in our tracks. Never allowing anything to get in our way. But to always be pushing towards the prize. The high calling of Jesus Christ. To become more like Jesus. That is our calling. To be the priests and kings that Jesus has called us to be. And ordained us to be. So. We're running out of time this morning, so I'm going to stop with these right now. Here are four goals, and next week we'll talk about seven keys. Here's the Christian's four goals for life. To know Christ intimately, to experience his resurrection power, to die to the old person you used to be, and allow God to to begin to mold you into the person that you ought to be and to be absolutely determined to persevere to the end, never stopping, always knowing that somehow you will reach the resurrection from the dead. The same way that Jesus was raised up from the dead on the third day, and now sits on the right hand of God, we can assume that no matter what's a, what hits us today in life, no matter what hits us tomorrow, as long as we're still in the race, as long as we're still running, we will somehow reach the resurrection, the resurrection power that's available to us.